All that was missing were the wind chimes he remembered so well from the years he lived by the shore. Books did take him away, but life, when it was on, was fantastic. There needed be no going to distant, imagined lands. The world was so small, they knew it was round, and found the poles and all that lay in between, and killed the cat. Coming back to himself felt good, though it could be so very painful, like falling a couple stories and hitting the ground so hard, hard as truth hits with a look from that pretty, pretty face that destroyed and rebuilt the entire human race, from knots of shining twine to silk edged with lace. The night turned in on itself, through much of it he slept, until half past three when he rose and watched a movie in the dark and alone, and Bella rose to embrace him with a sunrise. He played the beads on her wrist while she touched the seeds of his necklace, and still she was tired, and they lay down together and pulled the sheet over themselves, which he drew back again, so to put his feet back on the floor and pull the tapestry over the window off its hooks to make the night go on into day while they lay in bed. What a dream this is. What a nightmare. He would have gone down and sucked the dirt off her toes had she asked, but she would not ask. That afternoon was summer hot in America. They went to a diner and sat in a booth across from one another and were handed paper menus. Coffee was poured into heavy mugs before them. There were a few people in the diner. Outside, a young child walked down the sidewalk with heavy feet each arm wrapped around a wheel of cheese, past the large plate glass windows and the two of them in the booth on the other side. He did not see the child, dark skin in the sun, back arched to support what her arms could not. He didn't look as she crossed the threshold of the diner. He was captivated by her across from him, his redhead. He couldn't take eyes off of her, even when the young girl stood before them with her thin long arms behind her. The coffee hit him hard and rushed his mind the way it had been rushed the night before, but differently. My dad, he looks like you, mister, the child said. Do you love your daddy, he asked. His eyes sat on Bella like rust to chrome. He forgot what he said the moment the words left his throat. He don't come home much. Mama slaps him when he do. Will's hair was frazzled and he turned to look at the brave girl. He had ripped through two sugar packets, and two was too much. He'd have to wait for the cup to be filled again to dilute and conquer the sweetness. Yet the sweetness would not walk. Her long, dark arms clasped behind her. She spoke honest words to them and got them smiling. One of the regulars called her away. He looked back to Bella in the glare of her pale skin against her red hair. She was looking out to the street when she spoke. She's an angel. Maybe she's your angel. Can't you look me in the eye? She laughed and then looked him sharply in the eye. He looked down, drank more coffee, then looked back at her. She was already looking upon the street and the people walking by. The sun was higher, shining down. Would you fuck me, he asked. She tried to contain her laughter. Will... I love you like a brother. Would you fuck your brother? You're sick. You need help. Does everyone have to impress you? Do I? Well, you should try. I'm a very judgmental person. Why do guys want to shock a girl? You want to see my teeth? I can play shocked for you, but it's an act. Because there's nothing really shocking, is there? That's why the media is so annoying. Did you say incest? You didn't. Shock girl meets the press. You girls perpetuate it with your act, he said. She laughed, leaned across the table and kissed him. He turned his head and looked out the window. The glare made him squint his eyes and he frowned.